Good afternoon, everyone. I'd love, like to welcome you to St. Thomas the Apostle Catholic Community on this celebration of the Feast of Pentecost. And I am impressed with a lot of you who have remembered to wear red, which I did not. So um, as we gather today, is there anyone celebrating a birthday this week? Anniversary? Yes. Yes. Congratulations. <clears throat> yes. Um, there is an anniversary, I think, tomorrow. Uh, exactly at 10 a.m. will be 40 years that I've been ordained. So. Okay. Um, then we have a few prayer intentions that I'd like us all to remember during this Mass for Carol Bartlemy in rehab and so many others, especially those recovering from strokes, for their family, for healing and for strength, for Mary and all those struggling with cancer, for children who struggle with their health, especially Finn and Kristen, for continued healing for Roger Halsbach and Mike Denno, for Heather Resch and her family whose house burned May we walk with them. For Jace Lewis Ray Raymond and all the baptized. For Judy Ellers and for, set for successful recovery and rehab from nerve damage. For Marie Driscoll, who passed away, her family, and all those who have died. For all graduates, may our love and support for them be undimmed. Let us now rise as we formally begin our liturgy today. Please join in our opening hymn number 27, One Spirit, One Church, number 27.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the powerful joy and healing of the Holy Spirit be with you all. As we gather here this day, we gather on this great festival of Pentecost to celebrate once more the only gift in life that matters, that our God is so deeply in love with us. It is in that spirit that we welcome those who have gathered here this day, those who have traveled any distance, those of other Christian traditions were honored by your presence. For this day brings to a close the great season of Easter. And so it is once again, the fire of our love, may it burn deep within our hearts. And so we pray that the Lord, Lord Jesus, may truly also cast out the fire of sin and death in our hearts. And so we pray. Gentle God of mercy, once again, we call upon your holy name. May your spirit be a spirit of compassion, of indulgent mercy, beyond our own imagination. For you are our God, living and true, as we pray, Lord, have mercy. You are God who destroyed the power of sin and death, but would not leave us orphaned. And so you said, I will send you an advocate who will burn like fire in your hearts. Christ, have mercy. mercy. It is you, Lord Jesus, who are our strength, our hope, our mercy, our forgiveness, and our undying fire of love. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us sing God's praises. Let us pray. O God, who by the mystery of today's great feast sanctify your whole church 
in every people and nation. Pour out, we pray, the gifts of the Holy Spirit across the face of the earth and with the divine grace that was at work when the gospel was first proclaimed. Why, fill now once more the hearts of all believers. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Let us be seated once more to be nourished by God's word. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the time for Pentecost was fulfilled, they were all in one place together. And suddenly there came from the sky a noise like a strong driving wind, and it filled the entire house in which they were. Then there appeared to them tongues as a fire, which parted and came to rest on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in different tongues as the Spirit enabled them to proclaim. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven staying in Jerusalem. At this sound, they gathered in a large crowd, but they were confused because each one heard them speaking in his own language. They were astounded and in amazement they asked, are not all these people who are speaking Galileans? Then how does each of us hear him in his native language? We are Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, inhabitants of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the districts of Libya near Cyrene as well as travelers from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. Yet, we hear them speaking in our own tongues of the mighty acts of God. The Word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different forms of service, but the same Lord. There are different workings, but the same God who produces all of them in everyone. To each individual, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for some benefit. As a body is one, though it has many parts, and all the parts of the body, though many, are one body, so also Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body whether Jews or Greeks, slaves or free persons, and we were all given to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Please join in singing number 28, Come, O Holy Spirit, verses 1 to 3, number 28.
alle, 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst, and he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was 16 years old, junior year in high school, and I just finished a retreat. And my brother, let's see, was I a junior? I was a sophomore, so he was a senior. That's right, we're two years apart. And so I just finished the sophomore retreat. In fact, I was this for you. It was October 16, 1972. I even remember my sophomore year retreat. And I remember just being lit on fire, just was almost, the, the hymn was just incredible what we were singing. It was an Appalachian hymn called God's Not Dead. You know it? He's still alive. I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel him all over me. And it was just wild at our high school. And when everything was said and done, that was the closing hymn, what would a brother come up and say to his younger brother? Calm down. <laughs> That's what he said. You know, I think about that in life. As I grew up as a kid, I remember people looking at me saying, you're too happy, settle down. How about that? You're too happy, settle down, settle down calm down. You're too high. And so that followed right into seminary when I gave one of my first homilies. And they looked at me and said, my class, by the way, I told you this, I think, yeah, I was voted worst preacher. Yes. Seriously. They just said, nobody's ever going to listen to you, which is cool, because Jesus did say, rest before him, so I tried to do that. But they said, you're way too excitable and evangelical. You sound almost Lutheran. <laughs> if any of our Lutheran sisters and brothers are here, I love you very much. <laughs> because the greatest, greatest compliment, one of the greatest compliments I ever received after, after an ecumenical wedding was the mother of the bride came up and said, you'd make a very fine Lutheran Wells pastor. I knew I was going to make it to heaven then. <laughs> the reason I bring this up in the first place is because we forget, and I've said this to you over and over again, we forget that we are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And I always chuckle when we, when we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. From where? Because the last place that you and I believe that the Holy Spirit lives and moves and has being in our hearts is in here. 
we forget that in baptism, the power of the Lord Jesus, the power of the Father and the Son and the Spirit live and move and have being in our hearts, and there isn't any sin or evil or anything that can destroy that and take that away. Listen to that not. There is no place in Scripture, no place that you will read, you'll never be afraid. No place. But almost on every page, you will hear consolation and peace, what you hear, you and I hear today. Peace I leave with you. And I know I said this last week or two weeks ago. Two we I forget, I'm getting old. Remember, the future tense is of Satan. The present tense is of God. He did not say, peace I will leave with you, peace I will give to you, because then that leads us to say, well, he's not here. Rubbish. Peace. The task of every disciple who is given the gift of the Spirit, the task of every disciple who is given the gift of Spirit is to be, here it is, I'm going to close with this, by the way. <laughs> You're like, oh, wow. Is to be committed to love. And that is never, ever, ever, ever easy because love has a cost. Love has a cost. Christ-like love has a cost. And so from youngest days of school, I never gave up hope of loving, ever. Which is why my grandmother always said to me, you're my little lover. I shouldn't even tell you that. That's what she said, I named you well. And so it is that we ourselves as disciples, we are committed, committed, not asked, but commanded, committed to love like the Lord Jesus, and what? We're not alone ever, 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 ever. Jesus says, peace I leave with you, peace I give to you, and he gave it 2,000 years ago, and where did it go? Nowhere. In here, we're surrounded. I got to be careful, I'll start sounding like Yoda, because we are surrounded. We always are surrounded by his peace and his love. So if the scriptures never say we won't be afraid, why do you think the disciples were in the upper room with the door locked? Because anybody who's got guts will admit, even as a Christian, I'm afraid. I need God. I need that spirit to sustain me. And that's precisely, precisely what we hear in the pages of the scriptures. His peace, his consolation, his mercy, and his love, almost and his healing, almost page after page after page. We are told that. All we're asked to do this day is believe that, that the Holy Spirit lives in you and me. Finally, someone asked me once, and they said, are you as zealous, are you as zealous as you were 40 years ago when you were 26? Yes, I said, I still am. I've mellowed a little bit. I've kind of aged like cheese or wine. You can't, look folks, if you're green, you grow. If you're ripe, you rot. That's the choice even at my age. You're green and growing. Don't ever say, I can't. We can, as a household of faith, we can continue to be disciples. And our only task is to love. Let the Holy Spirit be in charge of the rest. Amen. Let us rise once more. And for our guests, we are sharing the Apostles' Creed during the great Easter season. And so we profess and proclaim, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. To you, good and gentle God, your daughters and sons turn once more with all our hearts. We pray that you might hear, for we believe you hear these humble prayers we place before you now. that inspired by the Holy Spirit, our bishops, priests, deacons, and religious spread the word of love and salvation to all the ends of the earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That women and men in positions spread the gospel of justice and peace in all they do. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all the sick experience the healing power of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those seeking and inquiring to enter fully into our church find Christ's wisdom and love in this community. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That this community might be a welcome place for those discerning a vocation to religious life, the priesthood or deaconate. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all graduates are led to make a difference in the new journeys they will embark on. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, for our deceased relatives and friends, for all the intentions in our prayer request book, and in particular for Frank Podner. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and gracious God, once more we pray you that your Holy Spirit that lives and moves and has being in our hearts and in this world once again be rekindled over and over again by the hope and the trust and the faith that we place in you, your Son Jesus, who lives with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as God forever and ever. Amen. Let us all be seated as our sacred altar table is clothed and prepared once more. Please join in number 29, one bread, one body, number 29.
Let us rise and pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as promised by your Son, the Holy Spirit may reveal to us more abundantly the hidden mystery of this sacrifice and graciously lead us into all truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for bringing your great Paschal mystery to completion. You bestowed the Holy Spirit today on those you made your adopted children by uniting them to your only begotten Son. This same Spirit, as the Church came to birth, opened to all peoples the knowledge of God and brought together the many languages of the earth in profession of one faith. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts join together in that unending hymn of your glory and sing. Father, you are holy indeed, and all creation rightly gives you praise. All life, all holiness comes from you, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, by the working of the Holy Spirit. From age to age, you gather a people to yourself, so that from east to west, a perfect offering may be made to the glory of your name. And so, Father, we bring you these gifts. We ask you to make them holy by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. O 
When supper was ended, he took the cup again. He gave you thanks and praise, gave the cup to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of this saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son may be filled with his Holy Spirit and become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may share an inheritance with all your saints, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing hell. May this sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace, the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth with your servants, Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have gathered before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children who are scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, why give kind admittance to your kingdom? For there we hope to share forever in the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us all rise once more, for it is at the Savior's command and formed by his divine teaching that we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give to you. Do not look upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus be with you all. Let us offer a spirit-filled sign of Christ's peace to each other. I broke. We behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
Please join in our communion hymn number 30, Spirit and Grace, number 30.
See, just like sophomore retreat, 1972. <laughs> Some things never change, and that's a good thing. Um, thank you, beautiful choir. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, beautiful gift of your voices and your hard work and your talent. So thank you so much, and Julie as well. Um, very Pentecostal today. That's good. Just a couple things to share with you very briefly. Um, there's the whole mission collection is today, uh, this weekend. And finally, uh, the other thing is uh, we have a gift for you. Um, and it's a book by Bishop Sheen. And you may not, some of you may not even know, you're young enough that you don't know who Bishop Sheen is. But it's just a little book with a little statement of his for 365 days of the year. And it's big print and big margins. So it's not this big tome that you have to read. But it's a gift to you, and we're giving each family in the parish two. Each family is being given two. One for you, and one to give away as a gift of love from St. Thomas, okay? And then you can invite them to come here if you wish. All right? That's what it's for. You'll get two when you leave. The books are on the left. Just tell us your name. Sorry, it won't take forever. And there's several tables that alphabetically, you know, A to F and so forth and so forth. But they would be really cool. Give one to somebody that you think could use that book, okay? So please do that. One for you, one for someone else. Maybe you don't even know. You're going to the grocery store and you've got it in a bag. Give it to the clerk. Seriously, go to Walmart at 5.30. Carry on the tradition. A.M. that is. Okay? The books will be here. Again, the books will be here, but to our family members, don't worry if you're a guest. I think there's going to be some eventually for you as well. But please take two, check your name off, and then please, what a great way. We're asked to make disciples. I can't think of any better gift than saying this is with love from St. Thomas the Apostle. Okay? Okay. Are there young people ages 3 to 12 that would come sit with me just for a minute? I just have a tiny story. It's not a huge story. It's just tiny. You don't have to but you're invited and you don't have to be a member of the church to sit at the step. I used to be able to do that. I think. You sure may. You can come sit. That's what we do. Yes, you sure. You are welcome to just to come and sit wherever you like. I'll find you. Okay. I have a story, and it's a real quick story, okay? I promise. It's not huge. Okay. Jesus says, did you ever... I have a friend who was a bus driver, and the bus driver always knew how to go and knew, knew where to go, right? And the bus driver... Did you know that bus drivers never get lost? Did you know that? Bus drivers never, ever get lost. They never do. They never do, right? You know why? Because the bus driver is taking care of you and me. So they never get lost. And so a bus driver always says, when I ask, you sure you know where you're going? And the bus driver says, I know the way. I know the way. I know the way. And the truth. And the life. And that's Jesus. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And Jesus always says, take my hand. I know the way. I think that's pretty cool. Jesus and a bus driver. You'll never forget. I met one once, and he always knew the way. And I think that's pretty special. 
and so are you. And we love you so very much. I bet you're glowing because you have Jesus inside, don't you? Thank you. You are so welcome. Well, I won't forget anybody. I never do. And, oh. Oh. That's the Holy Spirit at work. That's for you. It's not homework. It really isn't. That's for you. Okay? Thanks for coming to the step. We love you very much. You are so welcome. Sacred Assembly, let us rise and let us pray. O God, who bestow heavenly gifts upon your church, safeguard, we pray, the grace you have given, that the gift of the Holy Spirit poured out upon her may retain its full force, and that this spiritual food may gain her an abundance of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Go in peace, alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God, alleluia, alleluia. Please join in our closing hymn, number 31. They'll know we are Christians, number 31.